all right guys um, welcome to blogging simplified now in this course you are going to learn how to create and monetize a blog for free i am going to be your facilitator for this course and my name is steven Ade. i don't want to waste time on this particular course so we are getting right into it all right so let's quickly dive into blogging simplified and see what we've got Right, now this is going to be our course outline. <clears throat> in the first <clears throat> lesson, sorry guys, in the first lesson I'll be taking you through the fundamentals of blogging. Then the second course is going to be on niche selection, how to select a niche. The third one is going to be keyword research. Uh, the fourth one is content creation. Then we have domain and hosting, we have setting up your blog, we have publishing your first post. We have monetizing your blog and the last one is going to be strategies to increase traffic rapidly, rapidly, right? So guys, these, is, these are the things that I will be taking you through in this particular course, right? And blogging is one interesting subject that I believe you should be interested in, especially if you want to accelerate your presence online. Right, so let's get right into the, the fundamentals of blogging. Now, when we talk about the fundamentals of blogging, these are the key things I'm going to touch on. What is a blog? What is a blog? When we talk about blog, like most of us may know already, a blog is basically a web page or a website, right, that contains um, certain classes of items, certain classes of contents that people actually resort to either for information purposes, for education purposes, or other I mean, reasons, okay? So a blog is basically having a web page, a website that allows you to put content on that particular web page so that other people can access it. That is what we call a blog. Now, a blog is, is okay, let me say there are different types of blogs, all right? There are basically two types of blogs. Now, the first blog we know is what we call the AdSense blog. Okay, it's the Google or the, the Google AdSense blog or the general blog. When we talk about the AdSense blog or the general blog, they are the types of web pages or websites or blogs that talks about general issues. For instance, how to do this, how to bake cake, how to do that, how to do those. I mean, not just the how to, most of the news articles or news and articles um, items are actually found on these general or AdSense blog. In other words, for an AdSense blog, there is not a specific subject. They cover different subjects. And so they actually talk about and they touch on different issues. So you will have somebody's blog that talks about um, politics, it talks about sports, it talks about fashion, it talks about travel or tourism and all of that. So that is a general blog. It is an AdSense blog. And that is perfect. So that is the first class of blog we have. And examples, as for examples, you can visit for your Sheldon.com, Felix.net. And those are examples, typical examples I can give you when it comes to general or AdSense blog. The second class of blog we have is what we call the affiliate blog. Now, when we talk about the affiliate blog, these are the types of blog that are dedicated to serve the purposes of promoting other people's business. In other words, if you have an affiliate blog, what you do is that you take people's products and their services and you market it for them. So whenever people buy a product through your referral link, you are paid a commission. Now, the good thing is that apart from getting commission from the people whose business you are marketing you, you can also place ads on your blog so, all right so you can have google place their own ads on your blog and then also pay you when people click on those ads i'll touch on that when we get to the monetization aspect but i just want you to know that there is what we call the affiliate blog so a blog like uh, a blog like netwallet.com nerd wallet.com for instance is dedicated to personal finances financial investment so that is an affiliate blog what they do is to refer people to 
certain companies, financial companies. So in, in, in simple terms, they are actually propagating the services of other people. All right. So those companies pay them when other people get to do business with those companies through their referral link. That is what we call the affiliate blog. All right, so the example is what I've given you. The next thing I want to touch on is niche selection. Now, this is very important when it comes to blogging. If you are going to be successful in blogging, it depends on this particular thing. It is very important. Now, what is a niche? When we talk about a niche, a niche is basically a subject. It is a branch, a part of a, of a whole that you want to dive into. All right. It is a part of the whole that you want to dive into. So you, for instance, who wants to be a blogger, the most important thing for you is to decide whether you want to do affiliate blog or AdSense. Uh, now, let me not confuse you with AdSense because you can have AdSense uh, um, on. You can have Google advertise through AdSense on your affiliate blog. Okay. So let me say general and affiliates so that, I mean, it makes sense that way. So you want to make sure that you are into a particular topic. I'm talking about niche selection now. Niche selection says that in niche selection, what you do is that you pick or you select a topic, right? Now, if you want to be a successful blogger, this is what I encourage you to do. For every successful blogger, you need to come up with a niche. And a niche could be sports, it could be fashion, it could be um, um, entertainment, it could be tourism, it could be food, or probably how to content. All right. Now, these are types of niches. By the way, get this. So, even these, these ones that these examples I have given you are actually too broad for you, especially when you are just started. So, let's do it this way. Instead of going with, let's say, um, a niche like digital marketing, digital marketing is too broad of course it's a branch a topic on its own that you can talk about it is too broad you don't want to go into that kind of field what you can do is to niche down so you say digital marketing what aspects of digital marketing do you want to talk about you can have email marketing you can have search engine optimal you know how to select a niche i'll be providing you a link so that you can access um, a pdf that i got that can help you select a niche that will be profitable okay so selecting a profitable niche you will need that link which i will share with you or you can find it in this description wherever I mean, wherever this video is it should come with that link right so you can find it there now make sure that you don't just say sports sports is too broad so you can decide to go into soccer or football you can go into tennis you can decide to go into rugby you can i mean american football you can decide to go into wrestling judo i i just hope you get the concept so that is what niche selection is all about all right so the resources is what i said i will be giving you that now um don't worry i'll give you the url so the next thing i want to talk about on that on is the keyword research now whenever you go to google and by the way in every single day, the number of individual searches on Google is about 5.6 billion every single day. So in every 24 hours, the Google search engine receives 5.6 billion searches. That is such a huge number, all right? Now, if we have 7 billion people in the world, that's almost like, that's like almost everybody such as something on Google every day. Okay, now that is why keyword research is important. Now, what keyword research seeks to do is to provide you or to make sure you know exactly what people are searching on the internet. For instance, when you go to Google, what do you type in that search bar? How to prepare this or that? 10 ways to do this or that. That is what you need to know. You need to know what people are looking for on Google. So the keyword, like I said, is what the people are searching for. Now, the reason why it is important is that 
when you know the keyword you can rank high in what we call a search engine optimization right now serp simply means search engine results page for instance when you go to google and you type out something you search something on google you realize that after your search there is a results page now that page that displays after your search is what we call the search engine results page remember the contents you see there are not the only content that talks about the subjects you are searching for but it is th those you are seeing you are seeing because those people are ranking high in terms of search engine they are ranking high on the search engine results page because they are using the right keywords they are using the right keywords they possibly have the keyword the exact keywords you typed into your search bar that is how come their web pages are able to display on the first page okay now how do you find these keywords so depending on what niche what niche that you are going into it is important that you find the keywords that are associated to that niche now you can do this by the help with the help of certain tools certain certain seo tools that enable you to research on these keywords now one of such tools is what we call moz now what moz does is that it gives you the volume okay and when we talk about volume it simply means the amount of searches or the amount of time that a particular keyword is searched in google on google for instance when you put a keyword when you are using most and by the way you have to pay for most it is not a free tool when you are using most what happens is that whenever you search a word all right whenever you search a word most helps you and not just most let me add keyword everywhere so that you get what we are talking about kw simply means keyword and then everywhere so the tool is keyword everywhere that is also a pay to with just ten dollars you i think you can access keyword everywhere with ten dollars you can also access most so that's just about um twenty dollars to access those two tools now they are tools that I, I am currently using and, and and i know what those tools do i know how powerful those tools are which is why i have recommended them in this particular course all right so let's get back to the keywords now like i said when you have the right keywords, the right construction of keywords, your page is most likely to rank on search engine. When you have the right keyword, your website is likely or your blog is likely to rank on the first page of Google. So the secret is being able to optimize your content, your keywords, such that when people search on the internet, you know exactly what you are talking about and that is what keyword everywhere and more does they help you know what keyword people are searching for how many times people are searching for this particular keyword for instance a keyword like affordable phones affordable phones when you when you are using keyword everywhere and most affordable phones is said six thousand six hundred times per month so every single month there is an average of six thousand six hundred searches of that particular keyword affordable phones so if you are creating content you then get an idea of what your caption should be and what your content should entail now there is also another free tool that enables you to access these features i'm talking about and that is what we call the h super tools now h super tools is a is a website or to a platform that, that is owned by one Hassan all right now he has built this tools website to enable people like you to access those features for free okay so you can do your keyword research and know the volume of keywords and all that there another tool I want to recommend is SEMrush now SEMrush has a free trial you can go to SEMrush.com you can put in any keyword and it will give you a breakdown of those keywords it, can, it will tell you how many times people are searching for that keyword exactly what the people are searching what is the intention why are people searching that keyword 
it can provide you with all those details so it's not just about blogging it's not just about writing content and publishing no you need to know the intents of the people right and that is what i am giving you and then the add-ons are what we call domain authority and the volume i've mentioned volume domain authority will also determine how your page will rank on the first page of google the authority of your domain of your website right to appear in the first sheet. now this is ranked between one to hundred percent that is domain authority is run between one from one to hundred percent now if, if you are into a field where the first page of google is showing 90 80 or, um, um, some even have 100 it means that the competition in that particular niche or with that particular keyword is high. and so you might not have the chances of passing those people by especially now that you are starting so you want to go into a niche that has high volume but no competition and i'll provide you with a link that gives you that opportunity that you can know exactly what you should blog about what people are searching a lot but very few, few people talk about them okay so i have a link that will lead you there now let's talk about content creation content creation now when it comes to blogging the basically depending on what type of blog you want to build there are basically three types of blogging um let me say two now we have what we call the you have one that kills videos and then you have the one that has to do with text and then probably the one that has to do with pictures now when it comes to video content it's been it's as, as the name sounds i mean it's about sharing video content it's basically about blogging video content so it could be uh, music videos of other people it could be movie scenes that you want to talk about in your blog it could be some um, um, comedy skits it could be trending videos that you want to talk about okay so depending on what niche like i said so you go for those videos and publish them on your website the next one is about text or writing now for most of the blogs we have and almost every blog you need to write something so those of you who are scared of writing you don't have to worry that is why i have built this content writing course content writing course to get you started even as an amateur it will build you up from an amateur to a pro all right and the good news is that those of you purchase this particular content writing course i will be offering you two weeks intensive mentorship program on content writing where i will myself um, guide you into becoming a pro when it comes to content writing and don't worry if you are even lazy at writing i know how to get you content i know how you can fit content and make it yours without any plagiarism without any copyright issues all right so we have pictures and this is particularly related to those of you who want to blog about photography you know there are people who are photographers okay so like i said a blog is for everybody everybody needs to have a blog you see even if you're a cook if, if you're a photographer if you're a teacher if you're a nurse you need to have a blog talk about your work so if you are a photographer you can take portraits you can take pictures beautiful pictures of nature of animals um and all that you know but i mean and and when you get those pictures you can publish them on your blog and talk about them right it's it's it's, it's, it's that beautiful and it's that simple and it pays don't think that these things don't pay that is the mistake most of you would do you see when you are blogging especially if you live in africa and ghana per se look or nigeria let me add that you see most of the times the idea is that you think you are blogging or you are creating content for those people who are around you you are creating content for friends you are creating content for the local people but that is not the case all right that is not the case you will be surprised that when you go to google and search or anything any keyword on google the contents of the websites that pop up are not even owned by people 
from your neighborhood. We are not even owned by people within your country. What does that tell you? People elsewhere are creating content for you to consume. Why don't you also create content for them to consume? So blogging is not just about creating content for your local people. No, it's about creating content for the entire world, for everybody who accesses the internet, right? So I'll give you content generation ideas. That is also in the PDF I'll give to you. And then how to write irresistible content. That is also in the book. And then I'll show you how to get content without writing. I have mentioned that. So this particular one we have here is a bonus for those who are buying the content writing course and those who will be joining the two weeks of content writing mentorship program. Now, there are some tools you will need for writing content. There are tools you will need for writing content. And one of those tools is what we call Grammarly. All right, now Grammarly is such a powerful tool that allows you to correct grammar errors in your um, content. Okay, so Grammarly helps you to construct your sentences well, make sure that you get rid of anything that ought not to be there. And please, when you are using Grammarly, don't think you are. You are a professor. I don't think you know so much. When Grammarly tells you this word should not be there, please take it off. Take it off. Don't don't go and uh, misbehave. Excuse my word, but don't think you know better. All right. So with Grammarly, you can, if you are using a smartphone, you can download a Grammarly keyboard, and if you're using a laptop, you can also get the Grammarly extension. And then search for the extension in the Chrome store, the Chrome web store, and then add or it can add the extension to your browser so that whenever you are doing any sort of typing, it can correct your writing. Another tool that I recommend for content writing is Google. Sorry, it's Google Docs. All right, Google Docs, Google Documents actually. Now, Google Document also allows you to save your content to your Google Drive automatically so that even when you lose your smartphone or your laptop gets damages or if it cracks, you can still access those contents. Plus, it also gives you the privilege to edit your content right in the app. And you can use it both online and offline. Now, tools for video content, you can try OpenShot if you're using a laptop or you can also try shortcut if you are using a laptop. Now, for those of you who are using mobile phones, I would recommend InShot. I would recommend InShot. I think InShot is a powerful tool. And you can also try Canva. They, they are such powerful tools, right? Now, in, in blogging, one of the things you will need is what we call the blog graphics. Blog graphics, they are basically pictures, all right? And you can access these pictures from certain websites. For example, is petzel.com. Pexel is P E X E L dot com, and you can also get some from Pixabay, P I X A B A Y dot com. You can also get some from Instock and all that. You can also search from Google. Now, the thing with Google is that most of you don't really know this function. You know, whenever you go on Google looking for an image, please get this. Most of the images on Google are copyrighted, and so when the, the owner of those pictures or those images sees you or finds out you are using it, especially in the internet, you might be sued for copyright issues. Okay, so what you do is that you go to settings if you are using, um, how do you call it? If you are using a laptop, go to tools. I don't know about the mobile phone, but if you're using a laptop, you go to tools. I think you should have that picture, that picture on your phone as well. You go to tools and then you go to, um, there's, there's, there, there are two options there, the common common rights, I think common copyrights or something. You select that so that you can use those images. Those are the ones you can use without getting into any copyright offenses or any copyright issues. Right. Now, let's get into domain and hosting. Now, when you want to create a blog, there are two things you need. First of all, you need to get a domain and you need to get um, hosting. So let's talk about this. What is a domain? When we talk about the domain, the domain is basically your website. All right. The domain is your 
work site. Now, when I say your website, what I mean is, for instance, when you want to go to Google, it is google.com. Google.com is a domain. YouTube.com is a domain. So you also want to have your own domain, okay? So let's say I want to create a website. I want to create a blog. I want to search for um, a domain name. I want to get my own domain name. So you choose which name you want. Now, for those of you who don't have any idea on which name you want, you can use a website called Namelix. Namelix. Name and then Lix. L-I-X dot com. All right, it gives you the opportunity to just key in a couple of words and then it will automatically, they are artificial intelligence, will automatically generate um, some random names for you to pick for. Okay, so you, you could use that option. Plus, I mean, you can decide to go with your brand name, your company name, whichever way you want. All right. So there are platforms that allow you to buy a domain. One of those platforms is Bluehost. You could also try Namecheap.com, Hostinga, um, HostGator, GoDaddy, and a, a couple others. I mean, there are many, but I mean, these are those that have been in the industry for longer than the other ones that I would recommend. Right now, those are the types of domains, and then we have what we call the types of. Those are just examples. Now. The, the, we have what we call the types of domains. We have what we call the top level domain, okay? The dot com, the dot x, y, z, and all that. Those are top level domains. Now, there are lower levels of domains that we have, but I don't recommend that we use those ones. I recommend that we use the top level domains, preferably the dot com domains, all right? I think those are beautiful and powerful tools. Those are beautiful and powerful domains that you need to use. Right, it gives you the privilege for your website to be able to be accessed by almost everybody anywhere in the world. Okay, there are domain names that cannot be accessed from certain parts of the world. Understand that. Right. Now, the recommended ones I've told you about them. Let's get to hosting. Now, when we talk about hosting, this is what it means. Now you have a web page, you have created a website, you have content on your website. But how do people get to see these contents? You put them at a place where other people can come to access it. Now, putting your website on that place or at that place for other people to access is what we call the hosting. You have hosted your website on a particular platform so that other people can also access it. All right, so that is basically, or in layman terms, that is what hosting is. Now, there are two types of hosting. There's what we call the shared hosting, and there is a virtual private service. Now, shared hosting simply means that you're going to host your website on somebody else's platform. So those people manage it. In fact, you will have authority, however, but it is on their platform that your website will be hosted for other people to access. And then there is a virtual private service. Now, if you are not very techy, I would advise that you go with the shared hosting, okay? I'd advise that you go with a share hosting, share hosting. And please don't think that it costs a lot to offer these services. A dot com domain, you can get a dot com domain for less than ten dollars. I mean, maximum should be ten dollars. A dot com domain, maximum should be ten dollars. Now, even if you don't have the money, but you have the intention, you intend to go with this thing that we are talking about, please make sure that you buy your domain and put it down. Make sure you buy your domain and get it there, okay? So that by the time you get ready to start, you, your domain will be there for you. Otherwise, you might not be lucky and by the time you would want to get started, somebody else has bought your domain already. So that domain will not exist. That is why it's important to buy your domain right now and it costs less than $10, okay? So a domain together with a hosting plan should cost you, um, if you are going to buy it for about, two years if you want to um, own it for about two years you could get it for about 95 dollars especially on hosting which i recommend you could you could get it for about 95 dollars and if you want to do one year it's not much um it should cost you somewhere 150 cities i don't know how many how much that is in dollars 
I don't know how much that is in dollars, but I think about 150 cities or 200 cities. No, let me say 200 cities, roughly. That, that's about $60. I don't know if that's if I'm right. All right. So do get your domain. I would recommend the shared hosting. Okay. Great. Now, what then you need to do is to set up your blog set up your blog i actually wanted to get you people into my blog okay so that you see how it looks like well don't look don't worry i'll try that let's get through this i'll try and put you into that now when you are setting up your blog the first thing you need to know about is your control panel now your control panel gives you the opportunity to manipulate your website that is where you determine the service you're going to use for your website. It is where you determine um, um, the number of databases you want to build. It's the back door, right, to your website. Okay. Now you need to have what we call the theme installation. Every website is built on a theme. There is a theme. The theme is the appearance of the website. It's how the website should look like. There are countless themes. If you are using WordPress. Or even if you are using Blogger, there are countless themes that you can resort to. We have Divi, we have Astra, we have Need, a couple of them. There are many I can't mention every one of them. All right. So make sure you install your theme. The next thing you want to do is to make sure you have the right plugins. Now, what are plugins? Plugins are just tools that promote or that extend the functions of a website. Okay. Tools and uh, plugins are just tools that extend the functionality of a particular website or blog. So you need to make sure, depending on what features you want to have in your blog, you get the right plugins installed in your WordPress um, um, website. And you do all these things at the back end. Okay, so that is why we have two classes of web developers we have the front end development and the, the developers and then we have the back end developers okay so the back end is building your website from behind the door okay that is where nobody sees what you are doing behind the scenes all right so that's that for plugins and once you're done with plugins you make sure you put up your permalink i will be taking you through that shortly um the customization of your site your site logo and favicon now um, you also need to have a logo for your site and a favicon i'll talk about those things when i get into the blog and you need to set up your front page and then that is that now you need to publish your first article i wanted to touch on articles manipulation how to manipulate articles but um no i'll not talk about it in this particular course those of you who joined the two weeks content writing program I'll teach you how to manipulate articles all right now the tools you will need for articles manipulation then all right so we have google blog spin boards grammarly extension blog graphics tools for free for free pick pics and all of that okay so that is that for this particular course now those who are joining those of you who are joining the content writing course 